You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast. The most listened to daily Miami Dolphins podcast on the internet. Come on, Dolphins fans. Time to fins up. Good evening, Miami Dolphins fans. How are you today? And thank you for listening to the DolphinsTalk.com podcast on this Wednesday, April the 3rd. I'm your host, Michael Leva, joined as always by Big E, Ian Berger. Ian, been a while. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. It's been a couple of weeks. We've stayed in touch over the last couple of weeks. I know you've put some great shows together. And by the way, we've like rearranged the furniture on our on our bit. podcast, right? We our, our intro is updated. I love it. And I love our new background too. So I feel like every year we get like a little more modern, right? We're up to the new year. We're up to the standards of the new season. So I love it, man. Good job. You want a little bit of a tease? I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tease. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's a new intro. Okay. Which by the start of the season might get another facelift to be even better than it is now. Ooh. This is just like a placeholder facelift one. Okay. Is we got to get rid of some of the older faces who are no longer here. Um, and and, you know, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. But we might even be getting a better one between now and September. Stay tuned for that. Nice. But Looking forward to, man. we got a ton to talk about on tonight's show. But before we get into any of that, as always, a big shout out to everyone listening at finheaven.com. Everyone go to finheaven.com, the largest Miami Dolphins message board on the internet. Also, a shout out to our friends at the I Am a Miami Dolphins fan Facebook page. Remember, they're great and talented Carlos Hernandez. If you're on Facebook, please be sure you are part of the I Am a Miami Dolphins fan Facebook page wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it's YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Podchaser, Audible. We're on all the platforms. There's too many to mention. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We've had you covered all offseason with all the breaking news, all the rumors, all the stuff been happening with the Dolphins. And as we transition to later this month, With the draft, we're going to have you covered with the draft. In fact, last night I recorded my first draft show with our in-house draft guru, Dante Colinelli. For about four or five years, we do this each year. Each week, we we preview a few positions. So on Thursday, be on the lookout for the draft preview show, a quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. Next week, we'll do running backs, offensive line. Then after that, we'll do some some of the positions on defense. Take you right up to the draft. We, We... cater the show around the Dolphins. We know the Dolphins aren't going to take a quarterback, so we don't spend a ton of time there. Wide receivers in play, we'll spend more time there. Same thing with offensive line. We know offensive line's in play, spend more time there. We cater, so it's a Dolphins-centric preview to get you the names who are fit and might be on Miami's radar. So check that out Thursday. That show will drop with myself and Dante Colinelli. And also, the Jalen Waddle Youth Football Camp is the place to be this summer. Join the Miami Star on June 22nd in Fort Lauderdale for skill building, fun, and memories that'll last a lifetime. Visit JalenWaddleCamp.com and register while spots are still available. Each camper will receive a limited edition t-shirt, a souvenir autograph, and a team photo with Jalen. Check out JalenWaddleCamp.com to learn more. That's JalenWaddleCamp.com. See you on the field. This is open to boys and girls, grades 1 through 8. And one last thing before I start, I just want to thank everyone who's tuned in and listened to any of our shows um, this offseason. And if you're listening tonight, I know there's a lot of podcast options out there, not just with the Miami Dolphins, but on all topics. And we do appreciate you listening and supporting our shows and our podcast network and taking the time to join us here and listen to the DolphinsTalk.com podcast network. So thank you very much for giving us some time and listening to us. We know there's a ton of options when it comes to podcasts. We really do appreciate it. All right, E, now that that's out of the way. Um, start off the week with some sad news. Vontae Davis, former Miami Dolphins first-round pick, passed away 
Um, don't have all the information yet, but just want to know if you want to share some thoughts on the passing of Ante Davis. It was just, uh, it was really shocking, you know, to, to, to see the news and, and, you know, it was, it was on April fool's day. Right. And, and yeah, bad day for it to happen. And, and I was thinking to myself, this would be a really rotten April fool's day joke, but hopefully the guy is okay. And then the more you learned about it, you know, at first it was, they didn't know who the person was that had passed away in that, that home in Davie, you know, and then they mentioned it was the home of Ante Davis and that what it was a man. And then, and then they said it was him. And I just, yeah, he, he, he had an infectious smile. You know, he, he gave it his all. I know that some of his best years were after, well, he had some great years with the dolphins, but I felt like some of his best years were probably in Indianapolis um, when he was, I think a two time pro bowler with the Colts. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's just very sad, especially when you see somebody who we know, and unfortunately, you know, he's also known for the, the hard knocks video. And, and I, I became very protective when, uh, people were sharing that video on, uh, on Monday. And I said, this probably isn't the right time. Cause this probably wasn't a high point in his career, you know, to, to see that and to, to see that rep- recorded and people play it back. So. Um, it was it was just tough. It was tough, you know. Man in his thirties, um, just overall a very good guy. It's just it's hard to see that. Yeah, and we have a little information on it. So that has come out since then. Um, he's found um, he he was found at his home on Monday in the home gym, unresponsive on the floor. Uh, per the early reports, there's no foul play. And his brother, former tight end Vernon Davis, he said he believes. Um, it has nothing to do with drugs and he might, uh, and this, this seems like it happened after a sauna session, he might've just collapsed and maybe hit his head or, um, he might've slipped after being like all wet and something and maybe hit his head that way. They don't know. He doesn't know that, but that's what he sort of thinks right now. And look, he was a very talented player coming out of Illinois. It really didn't work out in Miami for him. Um, for the people who know, the behind the scenes stuff. I don't want to talk about that now. It's not right, but there are issues behind the scenes. Let's just leave it at that. And the hard knocks thing I'm with you. I, you know, I was kind of, I shouldn't be disappointed with people on social media because it's social media and most people are jerks um, to see that clip kind of go kind of viral again in the wake of this news. And after watching it again, which I did watch because it was out there everywhere, two things really came to mind. And I know, look, a man just died. Jeff Ireland handled that situation perfectly. He was comforting Devontae. I know Jeff Ireland gets a lot of crap for other stuff, and that's fine. But the way he handled that situation, he saw the kid was rattled when he told him the news. And he really did an amazing job from that point. Look, he was a kid, early 20s. He's just being told, you you know, now you've been traded. We're going to put you on a plane in a few hours, and you're going to be in, like, a new state, new city with a new life, essentially. The kid was rattled, a little immature probably. And Jeff Ireland, you watch the full clip. He really handled that as well as any general manager could, trying to like comfort this kid and be like, it's going to be okay. Like You're a talented player. We still like you as a person. It's just – so I give Jeff Ireland a lot of credit. And now, because I haven't seen that clip in God knows how many years, probably over 10 years, watching it again with myself a little bit older and just through a new lens, um, I thought Jeff Ireland did great. The other thing, you know, as you said, Fonte went to Indy. And at not one, he had six very good seasons. And he lived up to that first round talent and hype. Just unfortunately, he was with Indianapolis and not Miami. So Vontae was a very good player. And I know how he retired and stuff. You know what? Until he you was with the Bills, shoes, right? He was with the yeah, Bills. Yeah, mid game, he left at halftime. Whatever. I'm not in his shoes. I'm not. So whatever. It, it means nothing now. I mean, in the big picture, life it means nothing. Um, but I feel so bad for. Uh, his family and just really thinking about them because, you know, he came to Miami with a lot of high expectations and, you know, that one clip is kind of what he's defined by, which is not fair because he did have a very good NFL career with the Colts. Agreed. Yep. All right. Let's get to some on the field stuff here. A report came out from the athletic that the dolphins um, have shown some interest in wide receiver, Tyler Boyd. Now they also did list about five other teams And we all know that Miami has an offer standing with Odell Beckham. Here's the deal. Miami doesn't have any money right now. Okay. They got no money. Um, And this reminds me of last season with the running backs 
Like, yeah, they're going to talk about trading for Jonathan Taylor. They're going to talk about signing Cook. They're going to talk about maybe making a trade for Swift. They're going to talk about maybe making a trade for Zaquan. They're going to talk to all these running backs, and we got this much money. And once they find out, we got to pay them. How much? Yeah, we're just talking about it. <laughs> and I kind of feel this wide receiver, like Tyler Boyd last year, I think, don't hold me to this, made like $10 million. He ain't coming for less. He wants more. Odell Beckham last year made like fifteen million. He ain't gonna get fifteen, but he—I mean, how much of a pay cut does he want to take? Is the point right now? They don't got money now. Maybe after June first, things will change. But those guys aren't gonna wait for Miami if they get a much—if they get a nice deal now, they're gonna sign with somebody as they should. Um, and I'm not sure post June first that eighteen million that's gonna open up. If Miami's just gonna be like, let's go shopping, I think that money's gonna be moved to you know Waddle extension thoughts, um, Holland. Jalen Phillips, the contract for two. Like, you can roll that money over next year to have that money to use for those types of things. So I think, yeah, they would love to have Odell Beckham or Tyler Boyd or whoever. It's just they want them at their price, and they're not going to pay, even though, like, wide receiver is a big need for Miami. I, some fans don't understand it, and I'm kind of tired of explaining it to them. Like, it's a big need because, yes, we got two great guys, but we saw last year when they were less than 100%, the offense stopped. <laughs> it's just like River Craycraft ain't stepping up. Okay. It, 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 folks, it's not happening. Like they need a legitimate number three, probably a legit number four as well. But let's start with the three. So what are your thoughts on the wide receiver position? Boyd, Odell, Ian, what say you? I, I, I so I'm kind of team Tyler Boyd in this, in this scenario. And, and yes, there, there's money involved and I don't know the Dolphins can afford to bring him on. And, you know, I look at, the two of them, Odell, he brings a certain passion that you definitely want. You know, we're talking about the team really building this toughness that maybe they haven't seen in the last couple of seasons with Mike McDaniel. And I think Odell would fit that. Um, but I almost feel like Tyler, his skills, his skill level to be consistent, to be really a true number three, because that's what he would be. Either him or Odell would probably be the number three wide receiver on this team. Um, I just think that he has a little bit more in him right now uh, in the tank. And I think he's got less injuries than we've seen with Odell. Um, and if I remember correctly, too, he's younger. He's younger than Odell Beckham Jr. right now. I want to say by yeah. a couple of years. Um, uh, he's so, going to be 30 this year. Exactly. Exactly. And Odell's definitely older than that. It, it, it's I would I would stick with Tyler. But here's the other thing, too. You know, some people are talking about Hunter Renfrew still being out there. Well, you know, sticks. I don't know why I she still has. Yeah, I, I know. And but there's also then you look at the draft and there might be opportunities with the draft. However, we still have some other holes that you'd like to see filled through the draft. Um, so I think out of everybody, I think if we could afford a Tyler Boyd, I think that would be a nice boost for our wide receiver room. But here's the other thing, too. Uh, the Buffalo Bills now have some holes yeah. and who knows who they're going to be going after to try and replace Stefan Diggs. Because that's a huge hole that they'll have to fill. No matter how much Bills fans might say, well, he's regressed. He wasn't really an important part of our offense. Yeah, he was. Even though he wasn't catching a lot during those last couple of games of the season, uh, he was pulling defenders away from other wide receivers that can make plays. So let's not pretend like he wasn't a big, big part of that team. Yeah, um, I think this is – Bills fans won't see it today. This was the best day the Bills have had in a long time. It's addition by subtraction with him. Get him out of there. He, he wasn't happy. I think he made the quarterback's life hell, and, and I think the quarterback handled it in a classy way, uh, at least in front of the cameras. Um, and I think now that he's gone, they, it's April 3rd. They're not playing a game for a long time. They can make a trade for a Higgins. They can make a trade for a, a – IU. Brandon Ayuk, I heard, right? Yeah. Yeah. he's. I mean, and, and it, you know, some people are saying, but they got all this dead money. Folks, we know the cap's not real. You can trade for one of those guys, rip up their contracts – Give them a big money deal. Year one, they count one million on the cap. Year two, it jumps to like twenty-eight million. There's ways around that. They can do it if they want. And then they got picks in rounds one and two. Um, if they don't make a trade, even they got picks in rounds one and two. They can look to slide up. Maybe get a Brian Thomas Jr. They're not going to get one of the top guys because it's going to go the draft, folks. Spoiler alert: one, two, three, quarterback, 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 four, five, six, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. So, but they can get a the kid from LSU, their Thomas, who's awesome, and they could trade up to like twelve or thirteen, fourteen, and get him. If they want, uh, or they could just sit where they are and just take one. This is a deep wide receiver class. This was the best thing that ever happened to the Bills. They might not, if, if, and why would they be watching this? Any fan of their team is not going to see that today, but it is. And then for the Houston Texans, they're a top three team in the AFC today. It's the Chiefs, Ravens, and Houston. They're the best, three best teams in the AFC, and it's not even close. Houston, you know, got, you know, 
Their owner's a nut job. A few years ago, he's holding a prayer circle each morning, and you know they were getting ready to run him out of the league. Now he he has hired the right people, and that rebuild is way ahead of schedule, and they're loaded. So kudos to both sides. I think it's one of those trades that's a win-win, and we'll see what the Bills do to replace them. But for the Dolphins, you know, I know some people were really down in OBJ. I'm like, folks, they're bringing him in to be a backup. He will be paid like a backup because we know they're not going to budge. And he's perfect as a third wide receiver. It's great if they get him. Tyler Boyd, even better. I don't think they're going to get him. I don't think they're going to get either one. We'll see. I And as I've been saying, and, I, and I've said it on numerous shows this offseason, round one, I'm not in love with taking a wide receiver, except if Brian Thomas Jr. is there 21. That's the exception. And I don't know how much research you've done or how much you've sort of done homework on draft stuff. I've been knee-deep in it now for like a few weeks. That kid's special. Most most years, he'd be the number one wide receiver off the board. This class is so good, he's the fourth. Um, if he's there, because your number one wide receiver in Tyreek Hill, say this nicely, folks, little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You don't know if the next time he does something stupid, he's going to be suspended. And the fact that they haven't restructured his contract when they restructured Chubbs and Armstead and Ramsey's lets you know what they think of him and that they're literally like someone in jail crossing off the days until they can move on from him right now. That's what they're doing um, because they don't, you can't trust them. And then you got Waddle's contracts coming up. They're going to pick up the fifth year option, of course, but you need someone else in the pipeline, not just to be a number three this year to win. You need someone else in the pipeline. So when Hill's gone, you hopefully then pay Waddle. He moves up to one a, and then whoever you get, if it's a Brian Thomas jr, he becomes your two. You got to keep the pipeline going because as we've seen in this offense and people saying John U. Smith, great. It's a tight end. We don't use tight ends. This is a wide receiver offense. And John Smith will have a role, and he'll be very, very good. This is a wide receiver-based offense. And, yeah, but those numbers, put them back up, E. Yes, For sir. A third wide receiver, that's fine. Like, what do you expect from a third wide receiver? Cedric Wilson didn't give you that. <laughs> like, you didn't get that from River Craycraft or Braxton Berrios. Yeah, he ain't retiring either. Look. Folks, I'm going to explain something real simple for you. Tyreek Hill ain't retiring. When Tyreek Hill talks, don't listen. He's he, he's a joke. Look at all the stuff happens off the field. You cannot take him seriously when he talks anymore. So I don't care what he says. He ain't going to retire. He's not going to be a porn star. He's just having fun. And it's, I remember he's not that. Serious. Yeah, that's right. So he ain't retiring, but he might not be playing in Miami. And, and unless they restructure him soon, which it doesn't look like it's happening, because if it didn't happen in March or April, well, I know we're just in the first part of April. Um, why would you do it later? Um, he's, pro- you know, he's got two years left. And then, hopefully, if they pay Waddle, hopefully, <laughs> he's your one. And then, he's, but you got to keep the pipeline fresh because this wide he's Ian. We saw it at the end of last year when those two guys were less than 100. percent You often stopped. You couldn't move the ball. Was, yeah, and I think the biggest difference too was that there was zero separation. That was the big notice yeah. that I, the thing that I noticed because they two was very accurate. Two is very accurate, but when you have zero separation, uh, it's it's basically like you got Devontae Parker all over again, and you just cannot – you can't get the ball can't into win. their hands. It's just not possible. And if they don't take one in round one, which I don't think they will unless it's him, and I don't even think he'll be there, but if he is there, Thomas, great. Then run up the card. But if he's not, you know, pick 50 – there's so many good wide receivers in this draft. At pick 55, you're going to get a really good one who most years would go in round one, fall in your lap there. So if they don't take in a round one, that's okay. I don't expect them to, honestly, but if they did, cool. Um, but they're going to get one, and maybe they don't take one in the draft, too. That's possible, but then if they don't, then they're going to have to pay in free agency because you cannot go into a season with just Hill and Waddle and the River Craycrest, Breck and Barrios, Eric, who's a commas of the world, because you, we've seen this story before. You know how it's going to end. It's just a matter of when. Um, yep. So that's – but, hey, look, if it's Tyler Boyd, sign me up. I'm a huge Tyler Boyd fan. I watched him when he played for Pittsburgh. He killed by – Syracuse Orange pretty much every time he played him. Tyler Boyd can play. He was good with the Bengals, too. So I'll take that. We'll okay, let's talk see. offensive line. Yeah. <laughs> it's offensive Ooh, yeah. line. Let's talk about the other position that's driving fans nuts. Um, the Dolphins re-signed Kendall Lamb to a one-year deal. Sound like Lamb was uh, not even really wanting to play this year, but he's going to give it one more go. This is last ride or whatever he said uh, on today, Wednesday. Um, and according to Barry Jackson, who put an article out about the offensive line, I'm going to read it. Some clips, and I'll get your thoughts, Ian. According to two sources, the Dolphins have have had at least some level of interest 
some level of communication with two veteran free agent starting guards and one part-time starting guard, but have indicated they might want to go through the draft before deciding whether to add a veteran starting guard. Isaiah Wynn is expected to be the front runner to start at left guard. The right guard could be Liam Meikenberg, Robert Jones, Lester, Car- Lester Cotton, Jack Driscoll, or someone, one of those guards they haven't signed yet. So you got Lamb's back, Armstead's back, Austin Jackson's back, Wynn's back, Eikenberg's back, Jones, Cotton are back, Keon Smith's back. Have the Dolphins done enough to no. um, improve the <laughs> offensive line? No, and and I think you still got the hole with Robert uh, Robert Jones, right? And and um, until you can find that replacement, I think you're still going to have some weakness there on that offensive line. And you know the thing is, is that w- what do we know about Teron? Number one, he's he's not going to get you. He's, he's not going to start 17 games. He's not going to be playing in all 17 games. So that's why it was good to have Kendall Lamb because I will say when Kendall Lamb was in the games last season. He he was he was formidable. He was actually he did a pretty good job when he was in. But the problem was too, he ended up getting hurt towards the end of the season. You know, and you look at some of these guys that are uh, that are on the the team. Isaiah Wynn, he got hurt last season, right? So he gets hurt um, every season. That's a problem. He's too much like Armstead, it, right? So you got you've got basically the entire left side that is most likely at some point in the season going to get injured. Not that we're hoping for that, but that's just been the way that history has shown. And then you've got Kendall Lamb and Lester Lester Cotton that take those spots. And you really need some younger, healthier talent to be able to fill in for those types of roles. Um, If we went into the season with this offensive line, it wouldn't surprise me if Chris Greer Greer came back and said, you guys worry a lot more about the offensive line than we do. Um, And I think it would be rightfully so. But if we get, you know, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about the draft. If we get an offensive line in that first round of the draft, which is never the sexy pick, um, but I think it would be the smart pick for the Dolphins, then I think you can use these guys as backups. And I think they are, they're good as backups. You just can't have them playing every single game, every single week for eight or nine weeks. It's just, that's just not what they're brought in for. I don't think that's what their bodies are built for at this point in their career. Yeah, um, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think, though, going into the season with win at left guard, to me, is a fail, if that if that's what ends up happening. Um, because, again, win, let's call it what it is. He was a first-round bust with the Patriots. Why? Could never stay healthy. Comes to Miami, plays seven great games, gets hurt. Um, and that's the problem with him. Like, him and Armstead are, like, cut from the same cloth. He just can't depend on them for a full season. And it's unfortunate. But that's reality, like you said. And... Robert Jones, again, as a run blocker, I'll take him every day of the week. He's a beast. He just can't pass block. I mean, I, I could get by him with a swim move probably, um, and, and that's a problem. So, yeah, and when it comes – and and it's like when they re-signed Lamb and they signed the guy from Philly, Driscoll, and they brought back Wynn, the quote you just said, you're more worried about the offensive line than we are, especially on Monday when I saw the Lamb thing, I'm like, they're not. they're probably not drafting – an offensive lineman at 21, maybe 55. And look, this is just me spitballing. My, yeah. Spitballing, but more of like an educated guess because yeah. he, what we've seen from Chris Greer in the past is round one, he only goes premium positions quarterback, corner, pass wide rusher, receiver. wide receiver, yeah. corner. And center guard ain't a premium position around one. So the it's kid from sexy. Oregon and the kid from Duke, you can write them off. I mean, Look, anything can happen. You could surprise me. I'm not saying what I say is the gospel, but just use logic and look at trends. Write those two guys off. Now, if there's a left tackle he's in love with, now I don't know if there will be at 21. Maybe the kid from Alabama, Latham. Maybe the kid, you know, whoever. And people expect them to go off the board before 21, but they fall to 21. Then he might take him, play him one year at either left guard or right guard, whatever. And then next year that person replaces Armstead at tackle. Absolutely, that could happen. Absolutely. Because you're really drafting a tackle. You got the fifth year option on tackle. They're playing one year at guard like Laramie Tunsil did. That could absolutely happen. But then you look at the other side of the line. They lost Raquan Davis and Christian Wilkins, and they have not replaced them in any which way. They signed five guys. They signed five guys, but maybe two, maybe three will actually make the roster. And they're all career backups who do nothing. So I'm thinking this is – Pretty much your offensive line, unless somebody falls in, in round one. Um, and in round one, we got to build up the defensive line because we have 
Zach Sealer, but he won man. Yeah, <laughs> won and, and man. they're they're going to know that, too. They'll double team yeah, him, too, exactly. especially they're depending gonna, on the talent there. He's going to see a lot. He's going to be blocked differently this year from opponents. So a Byron Murphy or a Johnny Newton from Illinois, if they're there at 21, I'm like, let me fill the Wilkins spot or like the Raekwon spot, put them next to Zach Sealer. And then 55, maybe we go see who's there at wide receiver. Let's see who's there. Maybe there's an offensive lineman who slipped through the cracks who can help. Because I think this offensive line, we know their logic -y. You know, if these guys didn't get hurt last year, we would have been great. We just got to hope they don't get hurt. But it's like, you know what they say about hope. <laughs> Hope's not a plan. Hope's not a strategy. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, it's not a strategy. So that's why I don't – I'm leaning. Okay, it's April 3rd. Anything could change. Yeah, trading back. We got someone in our chat here. Greg, I would not be mad trading back. Yes and no. Yes, because you want to get more picks and they have more holes to fill. But no, if you got someone who falls at 21, who's like very, very good. Who's really like high on your board. a very, very right? good player. Yeah. But at 55, you could trade back because that's 55. It's a little different than 21. 21, you got the fifth year option in play. You know, you want to get someone who can come in. Yeah, I think Bill, I think him, I think him or Murphy, if they're 21, I don't know how Chris Greer passes them up. As of today. On April 3rd, it's fluid. As Stephen A. Smith says, it's fluid. I, I'm entitled to change my opinion. And I yes. might in the coming weeks, E. But that's where I am right now. What are your thoughts on offensive line versus defensive line, knowing who we have now? I think this might be our offensive line. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, I, I, I'm going to stay. We hope I think, not. I think the greatest need right now is that offensive line um, because I think you've got you've got a lot of – valuable pieces on the offense right now you know with waddle with hill with Mostert, with hn you know even we've got john john smith right now tight end and of course tua um and i think you've got to be able to protect tua and be able to create the holes in the running game for us to score some points and i think on the defensive side of the ball you, you know on the back end i almost feel like we're in a pretty good place on the cornerback and on the safety side. We are. So we are. I, I think if you can cover from the back end, that will give the front side, the the you know, the defensive line some time to be able to make something happen. Or if you if you come up with some blitz packages and you've got some of those fast linebackers coming through, I think that'll give you that time to be able to try and 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 get to the quarterback. So that's why I say if you put a little focus on the offense, protect to it, he's gonna put some ports on points on the board. And then you allow the defense to try and hold some stuff back. That's that's kind of the strategy I'm thinking about. But, you know, I, I don't mind trading back. I just don't know if if that's something Chris Greer really wants to do. And to your point, Mike, you know, there's a lot of great talent, especially in that first round, and the you know, the top 32 that everybody's talking about, top 31 that everybody's talking about. Um, I don't know if the Dolphins are going to be willing to, to give up, yeah. you know, to give up their spot if, if they find somebody that they absolutely love in that spot. Here's a couple things to remember. They haven't had a first round pick in two seasons. You're at 21. That's, I mean, that's you're in 21 in a draft where before 21, you're going to have at least four quarterbacks go, maybe five. You're going to have a tight end go who Miami's got no interest in tight end. You're going to have one, maybe two cornerbacks go. The top three wide receivers who are great, Miami's got no chance of getting them though. So what's that? Four, seven, <clears throat> eight, nine, ten. You're going to have by pick 21, 10 players who Miami either does not need or got no shot at, I means you're going to get like a top 11 player. And plus this draft is loaded at the positions in need, which are yeah. offensive line, wide receiver, and defensive line. Like to sit there 21, like without even without picking up the phone, a good player is literally going to fall into your lap. Who can be that number three wide receiver? Who can maybe start this year at guard? Who can maybe be a the number one center on the board? Recon. Yeah. Just yeah. don't do anything. And you're going to get a player who can, you know, probably help, who's going to be very good, who's going to help you. So that's why, yeah, if you can trade back to like 23 and get something great, but to trade back to like 28, 29, I, I'd be very careful because then you're playing with fire. And then you might be like, well, all the guys we like, they're gone. Now we got to reach on somebody. And this ain't a year to reach because we just lost two studs in Wilkins and Hunt. We got to replace them somehow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this. This team isn't like right now on paper isn't as good as it was last year because we haven't replaced them. If we can get a Murphy who can come in, he can be Christian Wilkins year one. But if he's you know an above average rookie, okay, now we got some hope moving forward. You know? right. So it's like right. I wouldn't be. And here's the other thing, which you made a point. I don't think you knew you were making it. 
If you're going to pay two of 44, 45, 42, whatever it is on average per year, give him this four or five year extension, you better build up around the kid to set him up for success. How do you do that? Well, maybe in the first two rounds, they take an offensive lineman and a wide receiver. That, if that would definitely set him up for money, success. Yeah. You better set him up for success. Otherwise, you're asking him to win games with one arm tied behind his back, and that's not fair. So, so let me, let's also make something very clear, Mike. And I think from our conversation, it is very clear. Dolphins are not taking a quarterback in the first two rounds. No, I've said that a hundred times. Okay, uh, just just making like sure for anybody listening. That shit. Oh, sorry for swearing. I don't like to talk about like this crap because it's so. F- that's like and this is why I try to avoid. I've done a very. I'm very proud of myself. Spent very little time on social media, and it's all social media: Facebook, Instagram, because it's such BS that people just have nothing to do but like talk. And I know Fox Sports had their guys. Let them talk about it. It's the off season. I get it, but it's like it's just it's not happening. Like. And, and you can make a debate, you know, if you want to have the debate that they should, like it's a fair debate, but here's the deal. In reality, it's not happening. So if someone's going to do a mock draft and say, Michael Penix at 21, well, that's stupid. It's just not going to happen. You want to have a philosophical debate. Miami should move on from Tua, start the clock over with a cheap quarterback who might be just as good. That's a philosophical debate. That's fair. But if you actually think it's going to actually happen, then you're just wasting breath because there's no chance of it happening. Yep. They've hitched their wagon to Tua. Like how stupid. Would Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel look after they have, you know, thrown flowers at his feet, tell him his farts smell like roses. He <laughs> leads the league in passing yards. Now we're going to move on from you. We're not going to move on from you after all the concussions where you stunk. We're going to move on from you after you let I mean, they would look like idiots. And, and if I was the owner, I'd say you're both fired. Like now, just leave the building. I don't yeah. need you. Any, like it's, That's why it's not going to happen. And if people want to waste time and energy on that crap, go for it. Like, yep. I'm, you know. I just can't get over fart smelling like roses, man. You come up with the greatest. You come up with the greatest. I mean, I got a lot of good analogies. I got a lot of good analogies. I can't use them all at uh, at once. I can't waste them all at the same time. time. No, I can't. No, especially in the off season. I got to save some for September when uh, (laughs) when we got more people tuning in. But yeah, so the draft's about you know a month away. Like I said, um, myself and Ian, we're going to be here um, all through with some shows. Probably. I mean, they're not going to be as long like this one. We're at 32 minutes. I got like one more thing to go over. <laughs> so they might not be our shows. And myself and Dante each week. I know Josh and Aaron will probably have um, some shows. And, of course, Stephen D um, with his shows will be on. So we'll have you covered through the draft. Then draft night, we're playing something special. Ian, are you going to be at a draft party if they hold one? Absolutely. I'm not going to miss it. So maybe I've actually already – I've already going, told okay. my uh, – Yeah, like we did that the, the last time we yeah. had an in-person You might have to one, do right? that because we're going to go – I know night one and night two, we're going – well – Night one's the party. We're gonna have wall to wall coverage with Stephen D. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, we're gonna have wall to wall coverage, so you might have to call in there from uh, live and uh, live from Hard Rock on. Stadium on the field. So yeah, exactly. We're good. Yeah, exactly. But we're gonna have wall to wall coverage that Thursday and Friday night. So again, if you're not subscribed to the DolphinsTalk.com YouTube channel, subscribe because Stephen D is gonna have a covering of a ton of guests on. I'll be popping in and out. Tom's going to be popping in and out. Josh and Aaron will probably be popping in and out and some other people as well. So, yeah, you're not going to want to miss the draft night and uh, see the react, the instant reaction of whoever we pick, which I'm sure will be over the top one way or another. <laughs> um, you never know, though. It might be positive, all depending who we take. But, yeah, it's look, it, the draft is fun because we truly don't know, but we kind of know what we need, and we hope Chris Greer kind of, you know, if he drafts like a safety in round one, people are going to – they're going to go nuts as they should. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, not that's necessary. okay. Like, not necessary. It's not necessary. Yeah, but if they go like left tackle, if they go wide receiver, if they go, you know, pass defensive, rusher, like, that's cool. Even if they that's go cool. defensive end, because Defen- I know the, those guys are hurt. Defensive. Right? And, look, they need defense. Ian, they need beef. Yeah. They lost two beef guys on, at the center of the defensive line that they haven't replaced, and they need beef up front. Uh, otherwise, teams are going to run the ball like eight yards a clip against us. They need beef. So we'll see what they do. Now, we're going to wrap up the show with Ian's favorite game. Oh, yes. Florida man or New York guy. I miss this. Man. I have two stories here. For those of you who haven't listened during the season, each each week we play the Florida man game because, you know, Florida's got some crazy stories. We know that. But other states do too. Florida's just got more. So whoever our, our opponent was that week, I'd read a crazy Florida man story, and I'd read um, if we're playing like the Jets. It was like a – some it was a crazy story from New York, playing the Raiders, crazy story from Vegas, playing the Chargers, crazy story from California. And Ian has to guess. And here's the deal, folks. In the chat, put up your guess which one's the Florida man story. No Googling, no cheating. We play for pride, 
not prize. It's really not that big a deal. Okay, story number one. A woman was arrested after she allegedly struck her boyfriend repeatedly with a Christmas tree during an argument, according to police. She was charged with domestic battery in connection with the incident that happened at 3.30 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, um, the female victim and the man were engaged in a verbal altercation at their home over the victim's alleged infidelity when the attack took place. The oh two individuals God. were eventually separated after the victim walked into the living room, but the female followed him into the living room, picked up a Christmas tree, and struck him repeatedly <laughs> while he was laying on the couch, according oh to God. the affidavit. Oh the God. victim suffered several minor, several minor scratches on his upper body and arms. The couple was in a romantic relationship and have been living together for two years. <sighs> Story number one. Story number two. A criminal justice activist is facing murder charges after cops found a dismembered body inside a apartment with the accused killer caught on surveillance video disguised in a blonde wig at the scene of the crime. Police <laughs> made the grisly discovery of a human torso in a blue bin and a head stashed in the freezer of the apartment. The man was held without bail at his arraignment. The ex-con who committed the crime, who he turned his life around and had become a well-known victim's advocate, was actually featured on the Joe Rogan podcast and rubbed elbows with many VIPs. Neighbors told the cops the victim was heard desperately pleading with his killer shortly before two shots rang out in the apartment. So, story number one, Florida or New York? Story number two, which one is it? Ian, what say you? I, I'm I'm waiting to see what they have in the chat because this one's got me thrown for the so loop. Florida, so you got Florida, New York, Florida. I saw, I think I saw Florida about number one, New York one. number number one, Florida one, number one, number one, California, no, not California. California. We don't have California. We got New York. <laughs> we got New York or Florida. New York number, number two, two, New York. Number one, New York. Number two, Florida. So yeah. Kind of Adley, split. Adley's I, got a couple. That means I picked two good ones this you week. You did. You did. But I am going to go with what JC recommended, which was Florida is number one, the beating with the Christmas tree. Um, and then number two is the the murderer. Uh, that's just an idiot. Yep. You are 100% right. The Florida woman, um, her name is her name is Miracle Rivera. <laughs> Miracle. It's a miracle Christmas Eve. The whole thing just fits. And that happened this past year, actually. So just a few months ago. Um, how did it end? She was booked into Pinellas County Jail. She was released from custody on Christmas Day and has pleaded not guilty. Um, I don't know how this has played out since. There's that one. The New York City one is crazy. The guy was an ex-con, spent time in jail, became a victim's right activist. Again, Joe Rogan show up and many other um, events where he was there with high level VIPs as he was someone helping ex cons and it ended up he kills, a, I guess, I think a few people in his apartment. Oh. And tr when he was trying to move some of the bodies, he put on a blonde wig and was seen entering the apartment. He put a torso in a blue pen, he shows him dragging the blue pen. It's the craziest story. Look, it's not, I know it's a murder, it's not funny, but people are nuts. That's all I gotta say. When, when you said blue bin, I was thinking it was like the recycle bin, and I was gonna there, go Florida. No, yeah, two. exactly. I thought, no, it, it's like a tote, you know, those totes where you might put, you know, like your not to tie you with the other store, like your Christmas ornaments, like a giant tote where you put the thing on and you then put like in the attic or the basement or something like that. Um, yeah, so so my dad types. just texted me. He said, what a waste of a good Christmas tree. Yeah. For, you ain't kidding. And that wasn't a Merry Christmas. 3 30, <laughs> in the morning. You want you, if you're up, you're open to see Santa. Nothing good Santa. happens at three 30 in the morning. Let's just say that on Christmas okay? Eve. No, yeah, it's like, no. what a day. <laughs> like you're cheating. It's Christmas Eve, honey. Give me a break. Really? I just can't wait to the 26th. <laughs> Can you talk about it then? Oh my uh, God, man. So, so listen real quick, Mike, too. You know, there are some, uh, so are some upcoming dates for the Miami Dolphins. It's just like, all right, I know we've got the draft in pretty much what? Three weeks, three weeks, three from weeks Thursday. from tomorrow. Yeah. Three weeks from tomorrow. Or Thursday. But the Dolphins Thursday. start holding team activities again on April 15th. May. Yeah. Well, yeah April. <laughs> April 15th is when the uh, team activities begin, but the OTAs... That's the voluntary ones. Correct, yeah. correct. And the OTAs will start May 20th, 21st, 23rd, 28th, 29th, 31st. So it'll be after the draft, so it will include the, the rookies. The rookies. Um, but it's... Uh, and everyone does expect for Tua to 
to come to all the practices, which why wouldn't he, right? I know he's got, he's in, in some contract conversations right now, but I think he'll be there. I think he'll be there well, to, yeah. you know, he wants to, whoever we end up picking at wide receiver, he's going to want to be there to make sure that he's building rapport with those guys. Yeah. And I, I did a show on this a few, well, last week when Mike McDaniel was at the owner's meeting and said, he'll be there to, a, you know, someone like a Connor Williams, who's a position player, they can hold out from that stuff. And yep. in fact, I think they should quarterbacks are just looked at differently. You're the, whether they want to or not, they're the leader of the team. They have to be there. Now, if Tua held out, I would actually understand because he wants his money and I get it. And, but quarterbacks are just viewed differently. And if he does, if he did hold out, which he's not, but if he did, you know, it, it'd be fair criticism to be like, look, dude, you want to make all this money. You want to be the leader. You got to show up. Like yeah. you, like you yeah. I know it's voluntary quarterbacks are looked at differently. They're graded differently. They're paid differently. He got to be there. So he, and again, he's going to be there. So I wasn't surprised when I heard that, but if it was like another position player, I totally understand like, no, stay home. I wouldn't risk it. Um, but yeah, he'll be there. So, you know, with the off season stuff, they're usually in shorts, just running around. Can't get too worked up. As I always say, for those off season stuff, I, Isaiah Ford looks like Jerry Rice. The minute the hitting started, Isaiah Ford looked like Isaiah Ford, and that's all you need to know. So the only thing, the, the most important thing for us is everybody stay healthy. That's all yeah, I care about. Well, do your, do your, you know, warm ups. Get your your lifts in. You're running in, but stay healthy. We need everybody. Yeah, we do, and that's going to be the key for this upcoming year because we know no Chubb, um, no Jalen Phipps at the start. How how much you're going to miss, we don't know. But you know, odds of them being there week one are probably slim, uh, especially with Chubb. So it's like the other guys got to stay healthy and they got to perform and keep this team afloat until those guys can come back. You know, kind of like last year with Ramsey, except that was just one player. These are two key players. That's your pass rush now. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's going to be, we'll see how it goes here. We'll see about a show next week. If there's any news to talk about, we'll do something. But absolutely, I mean, if there's not any news, I don't know. I I mean, I can only do so many Florida man games. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know, I know. Okay, so Ian, anything else to say in closing? No, I, I got nothing. Just uh, fins up. I uh, I'm always glad to talk to you, Mike. I've missed you here the last you couple of weeks. Base every but, now and then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, as as things start warming up, as as we get closer to July, you know, we'll start getting back to our weekly cadence as we have. And had I got in the some past. news for you too, which what? I'll tell I'll I'll tell you more off the air. Oh, okay. I might be I might be down in your area before the season. Oh, hey, man. Tell me. So me if know. that's the case, we got to meet up for it. dinner or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. We'll, we'll have to meet up for dinner. But uh, not one of those expensive steak restaurants that you like to go to. Then no, we'll have to well, that. look, <laughs> if it's a vacation for me, we ain't going, <laughs> we ain't going to McDonald's. OK, <laughs> OK. Don't worry about the bill. I'll pick it up. We ain't going to McDonald's. <laughs> well, OK, nice. we're going someplace <laughs> nice. Um, I'll let you know off the air. But uh, yeah, so everyone check out the website, dolphinstock.com. We got a bunch of articles up there on the site. We got a bunch of mock drafts you want. If you know, there's so many mock drafts out there, and most of them are crap. But the ones from ESPN, Fox Sports, NFL Network, NFL.com, um, The Athletic, PFF. We got like the mock drafts from reputable places. You want, and I just put up the Miami picks and then give you a, a rundown of each player. Check them out. You sort of get a feel of what other people think Miami should do. And it's not a surprise wide receiver, defensive line, <laughs> offensive line. You really much don't see anything else. Um, so yep. check out those mock drafts up at the website, dolphinstock.com. Uh, also, we have a, a ton of podcasts as well. Check them out. And be sure to follow Ian at Ian693 on Twitter. Follow myself at Dolphins Talk. We will talk to you in after a while. And, folks, don't forget, we must put an end to highway profanity. Fins up, everybody. Have a good night.